Today we have the honor to talk to one, if not the only, Vietnamese Americans for actresses in Japanese American animations. Her voice has been in 11 video games, 10 feature TV series, 4 feature movies, totaling 26 roles from 25 titles. Please welcome Sang Tae Huynh to the movie TV show. Hello, thank you Anh and thank you Nguyen Vic for having me today. I'm very honored to be here. So, Sante, thank you for coming today. Um, you, it's an honor to have you as our guest. I have to say that there is a rare, it's rare to have a Vietnamese American actress in Japanese animation. I wonder, how come your journey start? Like, can you tell me a little bit about your beginning? Um, first of all, I was just a really big fan of anime. Um, I started off doing theater first. I studied it in middle school, high school, and eventually also in college. And um, because of, I feel like I had a really strong uh, basis in acting first before I went to voiceover, that it's really helped me to um, be successful. And um, it wasn't until I was one day watching anime and I thought this one voice didn't really match the character. Oh, and wow. I felt like, you know what, I wish I could do this. I, could, I feel like I could do a good job. and. Um, I was talking to some friends and they recommended that I, I go and do this competition that's at Anime Expo. And I went and I was a finalist. I didn't win, but I still got the opportunity to come in to their studio and audition for them. And so that's kind of how I got to merge the two things that I like together. So i um, just really fortunate. It was just very um, lucky timing, I feel like, on top of that. Okay, since we talk about the Anime Expo 2007, is that, am I correct? Yes. So, what was your experience like? Can you tell me about your experience when you got to the finalists? Oh, it... Your feelings? <laughs> it, was, um, it was very surreal because I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't know anything about voiceover at the time yet. I had only had a basis in theater. And um, luckily, everybody was really nice um, once they made it to uh, the final rounds, everybody kind of um, helped me to um, figure out how the system worked. They told me how to, how to uh, approach it, and um, that's how I kind of, um, that's how I kind of, um, I, I, I felt, I was, I was nervous, and at the same time, I felt like everybody was taking really good care of me. Oh, and so it was really fun, and meeting the other finalists too, it wasn't super competitive, everybody was really nice. Mm -hmm. Um, I think because we all like video game and anime, I so I think that helped a lot. And so it was actually a lot of fun for me, even though I didn't win, um, I still had a really good experience. I see. So I did some research and I found out that um, before some interview before, you said this job um, is for a specific type, for chosen few people who can do this job. Can you elaborate more on that um, for me, please? Um, it's very selective. Isn't it? It's selective in a, well, I'm not sure if it's really selective in a way. It, it, it's just, hmm. <laughs> Take Can you say the question one more time? Okay, <laughs> so in one of your interviews before, uh, you said that this type of career belonged to a chosen few. Can you elaborate on that comments? Can you explain it to me a little bit deeper? Hmm. I'm not sure if it's more like chosen for the select few. It's like I feel like maybe not enough people go further enough with it because um, it does, besides the vocal component, you really do need a basis for, for acting. Mm -hmm. People always think that, oh, I can do all these different impressions and different voices, but really, you really need to be able to create certain characters and sustain them. You know, like uh, the examples that are always given is like, if you can do an impression of like Mickey Mouse, can you do Mickey Mouse like in love or angry or all these different emotions? He's not just like a one line character. You have to be able to do all sorts of expressions in this type of voice, in this type of character. So I, I feel like that's something that maybe people don't really always understand. Mm. And I, um, and just to go a little bit further with that, I really like voiceover in particular for me because I feel like I can be any type of character. I, it, I don't have to look a certain way. Like if I was on camera or on stage, then I'm limited to the, my size and my look. Mm -hmm. um, whereas in 
in animation, I could be, you know, I can be somebody huge, I could be a robot, I could be an animal, wow. I could be anything. I see, yeah. I see. So back in 2004, when you got your first role in Magical Girl, Lyrical, Nanona, Nanoha, I believe. So what was your biggest challenge when you first got your role? Like, how did you prepare? How did you, you know, be ready for your first role? Um, I think maybe it came out in Japan in 2004, but for us, I think it came out in 2008. The, um, it was a little bit after I had competed at the okay. AX Idol. Um, and uh, I was, I was really nervous. <laughs> I didn't really know uh, what to expect going in. Luckily, uh, my director, Tony Oliver, is such an amazing um, mentor and director. He kind of um, got in the booth with me and told me, okay, this is how it's going to go. We're gonna show you the, the Japanese line, then you're gonna he hear the three beeps, and then on the fourth imaginary beep is when you would say your line. Mm. And um, we just went from there. He gave me a rundown of the show and the character. So it was easy to be able to just jump in. And you, so it's, a, a lot of it is like, trusting in the producers and the director to really help guide you to um, to to how you do the character. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you go in and you don't know anything at all. You never see the script ahead of time. You're reading it cold right there. And so you um, have Could to trust. Put a life in it. Put a yeah. Life in yeah, it really character. helps that the director kind of helps mm -hmm. you to stay on track with that character. Okay. So, um, how did your family, they support you in when you decided to go into this field? Was that, <laughs> did, did they have any concerns? I think with any parent of an artist or actor, um, they're always concerned like, how are you going to you know, take care of you? This is not a very stable career, you should go. And my parents, um, in the beginning, they, you know, they knew that acting was something that I really liked, but you know, of course, they, they worry about me. They want me to um, do a job like business or pharmacy or something more stable, so that I could take care of myself. Because you know, they've worked so hard to, mm -hmm. you know, start their own lives here. And once they come up, came over to America and taking care of them and taking care of me and my siblings. And so um, I feel like even though um, they try to push me into these other careers, I felt like I just didn't have the passion for it. And every time I tried to study for these other things, I just really couldn't put my heart into it. And I just didn't have the talent for them either. I'm just not good at math and sciences. And so I, um, so they, they knew that this was something that I really wanted to do. And so I still pursued it on the side, alongside with helping them at the time when they're running their own business. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of uh, a, trying to balance and make everybody happy. So okay. I was like, trying to help them with their, you know, their career goals and like trying to do the things that I want to do so that I can, you know, hopefully have a long going career. <laughs> All right, so chúng tôi xin chỉ lại ít phút sau vài phút chương trình quảng cáo.